Well, hello and welcome to Viewer Exclusive here on Viewer Television. On this episode of Viewer Exclusive, we're going to be looking at a lot of happenings in the country. There's been a lot that has happened in the past week, both political, security-wise. There's been a lot of concern amongst Nigerians, among the citizenry of the nation. And in this program today, we're going to be drawing views and analysis. And of course, I won't be doing this alone. I'll be joined by an expert who is a political commentator. As you always, my name is Chinon Sochekwas. Join me again after the break. Yeah, many thanks for staying with me on viewer exclusive here on viewer television and like i informed you before we went on that short break that i'll be joined by a political commentator his name is ajiro unueta he is a lecturer at the city polytechnic of abuja thank you very much for joining us again thank you Gina, so yeah it's, it's always a pleasure to have you so let's go straight into the matters of the day first of all is a point of concern for every Nigerian. Nigerians now are living in fear. People cannot move freely. I personally, my doors are locked earlier than normal because of a rising case of kidnapping and banditry, especially in the nation's capital. We have seen the minister of, of um, the minister of the FCT. Thankfully, he's he, we feel like he's listening to us because we felt like he has been too much concerned in um, politics in rivers but i think now he's come back and he wants to handle the, the issues based on his proclamations his declarations and moves do you see an end to this insight and is he making the right and necessary moves to see that insecurity is being curbed well uh first of the the minister is a very uh, dogged person and uh, he likes to really match action with his words mm. so uh, i'll give it to him uh, because uh, uh two days ago there was a meeting in uh, buari they had a town hall meeting where he came personally to address the people to tell them that okay government we, we are trying to put up some measures in place to really uh, tackle this insecurity and i think they are really going in the right direction because a lot of persons have been wondering when will the minister speak? Mm. And he has spoken. And uh, it's time for him now to match action with the word. Because from what we've seen, uh, with all that has happened within the week, you could really see that uh, something drastic needs to be done. Yeah. Because if we don't do that, who knows? Anybody can be a victim. Mm. And for, for individuals, you, you need to first put your security first. Like you said, your doors are always shut earlier than oh, they yeah. used to. So uh, every other person, it seems like our ninth life is gradually uh, becoming yeah. something else because a lot of persons no longer see the need to go out at night because uh, most of these things, if you are not careful, some group of guys will just round you up and the next thing you are in their den. So there are three things. When you, I happen to speak with some uh, security experts. And they told me about uh, the three R's, okay? Okay. The, the three R's is uh, uh, response, review, mm -hmm. and recover. You know, response in the sense that if you are giving numbers out for people to call, that's from on the side of the security now, your response times need to be very fast. They need to respond on time because I've heard a lot of persons say, 
when they came under attack, they call these numbers, they don't get any response. Okay. Or when they get response, it's rather too late and, and all that. And they're calling so, the right numbers that were put out. Yes. So I think they need to really look at these three hours. You know, the response times should be very fast because you know how these things happen. It's more like a gorilla hit. They hit you, they, they just move into thin air, so to speak. And, you know, they need to review the, 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 the approach and then check the, the modus operandi of these bandits. Mm. In most times, you see, they come, they come from uh, either neighboring uh, towns bordering other towns, you know, like what we have in, the, in Buari. They come either from Kaduna, using the mountains and all that. Mm. So the security agent need to review some of these, their modus operandi. What do they really need to do? The IG of police say is going to bring out uh, the, uh, what is it called now? The SIS. The uh, respond, I can't remember the complete acronym for it again, mm. but they are going to bring out some of these uh, uh, special squad. Mm. Okay. Special intervention squad. Special sport. intervention squad. Right. Now, bringing these guys, they need to be strategic. Where do you want to place these guys? Because for me, if you ask me, I think they should put these guys in some of those routes those bushes where these guys these known routes because Do some we know persons, the routes? Yeah, you're saying known routes so yeah we some persons routes. that were kidnapped that came out of that uh, kidnappers den they were able to tell you that okay they take us through so so place so the, the the security agencies need to interface with these persons all right mm -hmm. so that they can be able to place some of these security persons in those routes Okay, to be able to stop this from happening. Sometimes, if you flood the whole town with security men, these guys still find a way of coming in. But when you block this route block with the security agencies, it becomes very difficult for them to come in, all right? And then another thing is, you probably uh, educate people on how to probably defend themselves. Don't make it that yeah. easy for them to just come Remember, pick we're you. not open um, car carrying um, communities. Yes, so yes. How do you defend yourself? Well, defend yourself could mean anything that you can use to defend yourself. Okay. <laughs> that is legal. That is legal. That is legal because... Uh, As against you can, people with arms. Yes, you can't go carry arms when they, they are not licensed and all that. So, so. I'm saying, as against people with arms? Well, anything that is legal. You can use it to defend yourself. If defending yourself means to run away, or to go hide or whatever you just have to do like it. like we've seen this funny meme going around that like we don't know the facts that where nyc has told them um, serving coppers to form relationship with their kidnappers well i don't i don't well, know the, it, I don't see, know the sense in that that takes me to what the israelis do you know they they make sure all of their graduates pass through some of us uh, some form of military training i think the nyc need to inculcate that into their system you know uh if once you go for NYC, they give you some military training as well. So that's on self defense. The, the camp is not enough. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough. On self defense, you need to know those defense tactics, what you do when you're in, when you're in danger and all that. So I think it will go a long way to kind of curb some of these uh, uh, menace that we find ourselves. You know, like uh, something one thing that has really make this to escalate is the mm. crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, yeah. and in the past, you hear that somebody has been kidnapped. The next thing, they they begin to negotiate on how to get the person out. But now, they just pick anybody randomly. Then be, well, before you know it, people start donating money to release the, to, to get these persons out. So that kind of send a strong message to these persons mm. that oh, we can just pick anybody. We can pick. So now they're not no, they're not targeting the elite. They're not. They targeting don't even children target the, the elite. They're just picking. Anybody you now at random, they pick anybody, and that man, this this crap funny thing happens on social media and all of those places. It means these people are there too. They are everywhere. A video was trending some days ago about a, a bandit that has a TikTok account. Oh wow! Yes, it was trending, and one begins to wonder how come the the security agencies are not able to track these persons. Mm. You know, if some if some persons begin to wonder because. I saw a documentary of a journalist who went to their den to interview them. So does it mean we don't have intelligence that could really uh, get their locations? 
Okay, mm. so these are these are some of the questions we need to really interrogate. Because if need you're to on find... TikTok, you're using a smartphone. Of course, the GPS is probably on, and all of those things for all the geolocation purposes. But let's let's move away from from that. Still, still on the matter anyway. Um, beef, in the past, Abuja used to be one of the most secure towns. I I I, I happen to be in Kaduna when it was a war ton zone I happened to be in plateau when it was too and you know that a lot of us at that time the first thing in your mind is let us move to abuja where it is safe and these people didn't have the audacity now we, we are we it, we're supposed to be developing we're supposed to be going more intelligence and everything what do we think is giving these people the audacity right now to infiltrate abuja at this point well uh, i think uh, the the security agent need to really <laughs> do a whole lot of work to find out uh, who and who is behind all of this because uh, with the, the kind of audacity they have to come into Abuja well I'm not even surprised because you talked about Kaduna Kaduna have most of the security agencies there right we have the NDA we have all manner of security agents their headquarters yeah. in Kaduna mm. But you still see these things happen. happening there. All right. So I think it's high time we begin to embrace uh, state policing okay. and community policing. Because if you need uh, people who really understand the area, you need somebody from within that community. That person can be able to tell you that this particular route leads to this place and all that. Because the, the kind of system we practice now is not, I don't think it's, it's really getting much result. Mm. I mean, how do you bring... Uh, an officer, let's say, for example, a police officer from Sokoto, you bring him to Abuja, he doesn't know the areas. Like they say in Hausa, the Lungus. Mm. Okay, he doesn't know those Lungus. Mm. So you, you need somebody from that community, community policing. They will be the, the ones to tell you that, okay, for this person taking through this route, he'll come out through this place. So let's go through this place. So we need to be smart and intelligent about this, you know. Yes, the issue we, we can equally use drones to monitor their movement. And there are there, there are cases where we read about how they will make demands and tell you they need an Okada. If you are coming to pay for ransom, they need a Jingchan and all that. Oh, how come wow. you know some persons will be thinking, how come they are not putting some chips in those Jingchen to track their location yeah, and all that? So exactly. I, I think the security agencies need to exactly. do a whole lot to unravel uh, what is going on because uh, people no longer sleep with their boat eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So still, still on some security matters. We know um, the news of a bomb, the bombing in Ibadan, uh, claimed over twenty houses and unfortunately five lives have been lost in that bombing. It's unclear right now what the cause of the bombing is. In your own opinion, what do you think has caused that and how can that be prevented from occurring again? Well, uh, I would like to stick to what the government has said uh, because they, they said it's uh, illegal mining from, uh, from Somalians. I, I begin to wonder how is that a mining foreigners mission? We get into your country mm. and begin to mine your resources illegally. Mm. And the place where this thing happened, Bodija, is a very is a high bra area. Exactly. It's not like it's a is a slum where people just troop in anyhow and do whatever they want. Mm. So it gives a source of concern. They need to really investigate some more to find out what really happened in that area. It's just like saying someone will come to Metama and uh, begin to mine illegally. Mine, yeah. I mean, and mining, for one, is part of what has really given birth to uh, banditry. Because in the north, we know how some of these things happen. We had stories of how uh, the bandits started from those areas. They come, they mine, they, they're able to get some precious uh, uh, gold, mm. and they, they sold them to, to fund and whatever. So I think the government needs to look into that because you cannot just come into our country and begin to mine. mine and where is the immigration? Yeah. Where, where are the customs? I mean, customs should even be alert and they should wake up to their duties, not just chasing rice at night, going to people's shop to mm. boggle their shop that oh, some illegal products are in the country and all that. So they should really do their job. Check some of this person, the NIN that we, they forced everybody to go register. Your, your this is when it should come. This is when it should, it should come, come to, come play, to play now. now. It should yes. come to play. We want to see all this being put into place. 
Okay, right. because the Nigerians suffered a lot to go through this registration. It is time to use it's them. It's time to use it, yes. And a lot of funding too was of course. a lot of money, a lot of allocation went into was got went into, yeah. So we need to put that to use. All right, let's let's take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll be getting your views and analysis on the student loan that we hear is to commence this January. All right, join me again right after the break. Welcome back. You're still watching Viewer Exclusive here on Viewer Television, and I'm still in conversation with Mr. Ejiro Onuata, a political commentator. All right, so before we went to the break, like I was mentioning, let's, let's um, get your, as a lecturer, let's get your views on the student loan. We know this bill was passed sometime in 20. 2023, right? And we remember the government saying that um, students will be able to access this loan in, sept in September. And then we got another date. And now we're getting January now. So what, what, what are the facts on ground that will let us, to help us see that actually people can access these loans in January? Well, uh, they, they've said that uh, one of the criteria is that you must be a Nigerian schooling uh, it, in, in a tertiary institution in Nigeria mm. for you to be able to assess the loan and uh, it will take you within 30 days to uh, complete and get your uh, the money. Uh, we just hope everything they've said will happen that way because we know in Nigeria we have beautiful policies but implementation, implementation. is always a problem. You know, and a lot of persons, I must tell you, really need to assess this loan because mm. The times are hard, like like uh, some persons will tell you, you know. We've seen that some persons, even when the, the school fees... In fact, there's one, one angle to it that I need to bring to it for, for you to understand. The, Im immediately, the student loan was announced. Yes. Tuition fee skyrocketed. Yes. I don't know if you know about yes, that. Yes, it did. A lot yes. of schools begin to increase their mm. tuition fee because they're already anticipating that, okay, there will be enough money in the system for students to be able to assess mm. and uh, further their education. So I think the government should uh, match their talk, you know. They should be able to ensure that the, the son of a common man, the son of a nobody, is mm. able to get this loan because in other uh, clients, like in the United States and or thereabout, we've seen that a lot of persons went through school the, and the government was able to fund their education. Okay, mm. over time they pay, and all. that's another kettle of fish yeah. altogether because it's one thing to go through school, it's another thing to get a job. To get a job. So, I think the government should be looking in that direction as well. Mm. You know, it's not just enough to go get the certificate. Okay, mm. I will, if you ask me, and this is my personal opinion, I think while some persons are in school, they should equally learn skill acquisition because. Uh, We've seen that some persons will graduate because it seems like the kind of education we get here is just give you the mentality of when you graduate, you get a white collar job. 
and it's not do all theoretical stuff. Yes, but I think everything should be practical. We should start looking at how to get things done. You, all right. So we should start looking towards that direction. While in school, at least get something doing, something outside school to complement. When you say, when you say we should get start acquiring skills, are you trying to say that um, even in tertiary education, we should expand our curriculum yes. to cover skills? So even if you're studying something professional, you should pick something by the side, welding or something else alongside with your course of study. Yes, it, it can be designed in such a way that uh, people go for industrial training, all right? It can be designed in such a way that you have time, maybe one, two, three months, to go learn something additional to whatever you're reading. Like, while I was in school, I learned sculpture. Okay. Yes. So, I think... And but that was not supported by the school. It's this not supported your... by the school. It was my own. I went... Mm. I needed... Okay, because, you know, there's no way you go through school in Nigeria that you will not encounter one strike or the other. So, during my time, we had, like, nine-month strike. Yeah. So, I had to go learn sculpture. And today, it's more like a side hustle that I can rely on okay. to get something from it. So, I think every student should have that mentality that education... It's not just for you to finish and get a white collar job. Education is supposed to empower you, okay? Mm. When you come out so that you, you become very versatile to think for yourself and do something creative that can give you money. Mm. There's been, there's really been a lot of emphasis on skill acquisition and all that. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that students themselves even pick up the initiative like you did and begin to learn skills alongside um, getting their formal education still talking about education recently we got the report that jam has asked for acts that um people living with disabilities should register for jam for free right and um, we know how the system can be should the government put checks boots on the ground to make sure that these people who are living with disabilities really are able to register for free and for, but firstly what's your take on that um that decision well, by the jam I, I think is a, a very brilliant decision mm. uh, i mean it's high time we begin to create room for people living with disability because uh, you see some of these persons are very brilliant yeah very skillful but just because they, they are disabled you know people tend to uh, not give them the same uh, chance they desire i think is a very brilliant one and the okay. government should really put checks in place in fact the society should begin to look at because there are some buildings you go these days people with disability don't even can't yeah, access, don't access some yes. of these buildings so i think jam starting it this way every other uh, organization should begin to look at ways to empower some of these uh, disabled persons because uh, they too they need education and mm. the government as well i want to say a government that in your cabinet, you have some disabled persons because they too can offer something to the society. They are disabled, they know how it feels to be disabled, so they should be able to make laws or do what take decisions that will favor people living with disability. So I think it's kudos for JAM, you know, but the government must put some checks in place checks. to ensure. Can, can you help us with checks like? There must be persons, like. there must be persons that will go around or there must be a DEX created by the government in JAM office to ensure that indeed these persons don't pay for, for that form because it's one thing to come out and say something, mm. then when you get there, you meet another different thing yeah. altogether. They'll tell you, oh, that's just a, a pronouncement by somebody, they are not aware of it and, and all that. So I think the government should ensure that these persons really get this form for mm. free. I mean, we should be looking towards that direction because uh, we don't want stories. You get there and then they tell you a different they story. tell you a different story, yes. And to also ensure that these people come out are really people living with disabilities because we will now have people coming in, of course, maybe for lack of funds, coming in in pretense to be disabled so that they can get their job registrations uh, so, <laughs> for free. So, 
So they run tests now to test if this person is really disabled. Well, they will just have to do their checks. They just like, and 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 it's, I think um, like you said, government should begin to. I think in some states we've seen people living with disabilities in some cabinets. I think Nasarawa State House of Assembly, they have um, somebody in the chamber. I think he's even um, a majority leader or something no, like no, that. When you say so, the House of Assembly, it mm, means the person probably is, contested for an, an election. Mm, and he won, right? Yes. I'm talking of appointments. Appointments. Yes. In your cabinet, as a governor, okay. as a president, let's see some persons living with disability. Because, yes, the, the guy in Nasara State probably has money or has a connection. It's not everybody living with disability that has uh, that have that kind of connection. Mm. So we want to see a conscious effort, deliberately picking somebody. To ha come. Yes. Yeah. All right, so talking on appointments and seeing people in, let's, let's take our eyes to the Ministry of Works. Recently, like a few days ago, it was on the news that the budget's allocation increased by 373 billion naira, billion, yes, naira, to make the budget 1.03 trillion naira. What for the, this amount of bogus budget? What should our expectations be from that ministry? Because they have said that most of this is allocated to federal roads. What should we begin to see happen? Well, uh, it means uh, the whole of Nigeria should become a construction site. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, if you go, there are some roads that are not just motorable. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, you try to maneuver your way there. In fact, some of these uh, kidnappers take advantage of those bad roads because they know you must definitely slow down. Yes. So yes. why some will pretend to be fixing the roads and people just bump into them? So and good road is part of security. So it's good road is part of security. So the government, giving this kind of money, we want to see everything working perfectly. I mean, one of the perfect roads I have applied in the last three months is uh, the... Abuja Makodi Road. Okay. Yes, that's Nasarawa Abuja Makodi. Mm. That road is perfect, smooth. There's a road leading up to Akwanga. Yes, yes. Uh, that, yes. that road is yeah. very smooth. I, I, I think uh, every road in Nigeria should look and like that. It was road. done by the state government. Well, the, yeah. if it means you copying from the state government, they should do it. All right. Uh, well, the, the person in the helm of affair, that's the former governor of, uh, that's the minister of works, Dave Umayi. Uh, well, given that what we've seen that him done for a state, I believe he will be able to do this. So we'll keep our fingers crossed mm -hmm. and we hope and pray that actually they'll do what they say they want to do. I mean, the citizens should not just go and sit down. There must be accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not enough for somebody to come out these days and tell you, I will do ABC without the citizens following the money. You must follow the money. You must account. You must ask questions. And you must get answered. The Freedom of Information Bill is out there. Go and ask questions. How many roads have you been able to construct? There should be time limit. Okay, this road will do it. Within six months, we should be able to wrap this up. Hmm. Citizens, follow up and ensure that is done. How do we follow up? Is there a desk in the ministry where we can go to find out what's happening? No, 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 no. no. You, you going to the desk is one, of, one part of it. But being on ground, going to verify is another part. Because there are some politicians that will snap pictures and show, take it to media men and say, oh, we've done this road, we've done... Mm. Even the media, there must be investigative journalism. To follow Go, this. follow up. Now, in this era of technology, when we have social media and the rest, Every there's no place that you can't find human being living existing. If you say you build a road in uh, Potuscom, mm. then there are people in Potuscom that should be able to verify, that upload it, and show us. If you say because I saw one road that I think the Enugu, I remember Enugu Highway or something like that. That road is something else. Mm. It's something else. It's terrible. So I think the the government needs to really look at some of these roads to really uh, give attention to some of this road because it's, it's not pliable, it's They're just something pliable. else. They are really not pliable, especially when you go towards the east, Niger Delta, all of those. Those, those roads, roads are, are really bad. Very deplorable states. All right, so let's, let's move on to other matters. Let's move on to economic matters now. Uh, President Bala Tinubu has recently said that uh, Nigeria is in the verge of economic recovery and prosperity. 
as he has promised us a renewed hope as his agenda for this Four years, <laughs> this, this four years in government. And I'm, I'm trying to draw parallels with um, recently as the dollar has hit 1,355 Naira. How are we going to get out of this? Because we are seeing multinationals leaving the country. We're seeing Nigerians outside of the country looking for investment, even though they have said now that, oh, they are not begging for investment. But, but we have seen these things happening. Is there really a way to get that we're really moving into economic prosperity in the country? Well, uh, I think the president, in his own wisdom, should understand what he's talking about. I mean, uh, he has been a governor, a two-time governor mm. of Lagos State. And Lagos, to me, is, a, is more like a mini Nigeria. All right? So if you really assess what he was able to achieve in Lagos State, mm. probably he should be able to replicate that in Nigeria as a whole. Uh, some of us felt, okay, we don't want to judge him too soon because uh, given what the, the, the situation he met on ground, you know, he, he's not a magician, you know. I'm mm -hmm. not holding brief for him, but he, sometimes we need to be realistic. I, I, he's not a magician. I don't think he will be able to do this within four years. But he is the one saying that yes. we are on to it, economic It's one recovery. thing for him to say that. It's another thing for us to assess what he's saying because... Uh, we can think for ourselves. I don't think uh, that can be done within four years, but he should be able to uh, hit the ground running, you know, put a lot of uh, machinery in place. I was thinking he will bring some technocrats. Mm. During the uh, Basenjo regime, we saw how he brought Ngozi uh, okonjo we saw the, the big names he brought into the game. Mm. I, I was thinking President Tinugu would have told the same part, you know, go over the war because there's no place in, in the world that you won't see Nigerians doing yeah. well. So I was thinking we'll be in that, that era where he will go around and pick some of these persons to come really help our economy. I mean, just yesterday I saw somewhere in the news where Abia State Governor has decided to make uh, some big names into his uh, economic team. Mm. I think Lamido Sanusi is part of that team, if I'm not, too, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. And one or two persons. So imagine if a state governor can be doing that. That's... In another four years, I, I believe the state will be better off economically. So I, I want to see President Tinubu do the same. Okay? He must march, he walk the talk. Okay? Get mm. some of these big shots all over the world. You know, he, he can bring a family, uh, is it Adeshina? Adeshina, yes. Adeshina yeah. of the African Development Every Bank. Bank yes. Yeah. He could, he could equally bring uh, Konjo Wella, some of these persons. We still have more of their likes out there. So he can really go out, get these persons to come fix the economy. Because what we've seen now is just a political appointee. Mm. Persons who worked for him and maybe it's time to pay back. It was just a reshuffle. Because the reshuffle, some mm. of these persons, they've been governor before. Some of them didn't even win their state. What does that tell you? It tells you that uh, probably some persons in those states didn't really feel they've delivered enough. So you bringing them to bigger a bigger platform to well what what do you expect? So that's why I, I, I'm saying that I don't think within four years he'll be able to achieve this. Because the things we, we we know he's not a magician, but there are some certain moves that we see you make initially that will set the, the ball, tone yes, for yes, yes. for what we like are you supposed said, to expect. Like you said, the, the dollar, how much is the dollar now? I think it's, it was one, it, it, it hit its highest of 1,355. So, so what are we saying? Mm. What are we even expecting? Aside crude oil. Yeah. Aside crude oil. Uh, see, there are some things I think the president should borrow from during the campaign. We heard a particular presidential candidate say he's going to turn Niger State into a farm hub. Mm -hmm. We could go into, because Niger State has the, the largest landmarks, landmarks yeah. in the whole of Nigeria. So we could really, he could borrow into that, turn Niger State into a, a, a farm hub where people, agriculture will not be the mainstay because we are looking, we will pay so much attention on oil because uh, it brings quick so money and all that. It's time to really diversify of that course, economy. I think we're, we're seeing the governor of um, Niger State really putting a lot of emphasis on agriculture. But let's keep that thought. We'll come back and go more into more conversations. Thank you for... Sticky with us, it's time now for another short break on VR Television. Join us again.
right, thank you for staying with us on Viewer Exclusive here on Viewer Television. And I'm still in conversation with Mr. Ejiro Nueta. Yes, and we've been having a long conversation. So let's begin to round this up now. Let's move into political matters right now. We saw um, Mr. Pato told me come on national TV to, come to, to affirm or to confirm a measure of certain parties that we know, PDP, Labour Party, and the NNPP. First of all, let me get your reaction on that. If there is a possible measure somewhere, what do you think that stands for the political scene in Nigeria? Well, it will be fantastic because uh, it will give the APC a run for their money. Okay. We, we saw how the APC was able to achieve that then they, they have the AD, the uh, CPC, and the one that, mm. APGA and the rest. They came mm. together and they, today they are in power. So if the PDP, the Labour Party, and the NMPP, if they are serious, then this merger should take place. Because uh, during the, the last election, there was this uh, most likely merger who, that didn't really take place between the Labour Party and the NNPP, you know. Uh, it's more like a collaboration than a collusion, not a mm. major, because it, it seems like uh, if you're talking of a major, that means the party must collapse their structure and become and one. So yeah. if they're able to do that, I think one of the crises they will have is who is going to flag. Exactly, the, because the, that, that is, that, that's another question that I like to put to you, which I put to a lot of people. If there is a measure, we're looking at these three people who came out as flag bearers for these parties in the 2023 elections. We have uh, Malaji Atiku, we have Peter Obi, and we have Kwanko. So these are people of, if, if let me just give it to them, these are people of three diverse ideologies. And these are men who would want to, what do you think would happen when it comes to who is going to be the party leader, who is going to be the flag bearer, who is going to be all of that for this party? Well, it's going to be quite a struggle uh, because this, these are three giants you just mentioned, hmm. people with heavy name, you know. Uh, if you look at the, the, the past election, you, you discover that Peter B is very popular in the South, but I think where he didn't really get enough uh, vote is from the North. And uh, who is in the North? You're talking of people like uh, the NNPP man, the hmm. Concosia movement, hmm. you know. You can see the, the margin they got in the last election in Kano State Kano, alone. Yeah. So if it's possible to have a pizza or beer and a concoso. It will be a perfect combination. But who is going to step down for who, for who? will be the problem. And then there's a, there's an Alaji Atiku who has been there contesting since 1993. Yeah. So it's not somebody who just push aside. Mm. Uh, except if an Alaji Atiku decide to say, okay, uh, let me support uh, Obi and Konkoso. Okay, so I believe at that point, the, the both of them should be able to mend issues to find who probably will come out for the president and who will deputize uh, the, the, the other. So I think that's where the problem will be. It's not really just coming together. Yes, if you come together, who is going to step down for the other? The last time we saw a Konko so say, I'm not going to step down for an Obi. Mm. All right? And then Obi left PDP because he wants to run for the presidency. Article, you mean? Peter Obi. You said we didn't see Kwanko so step down for Step down for Obi. For Obi. When they were talking about the merger. Okay, 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 okay. Now, Peter Obi left PDP because he didn't get the ticket. The ticket yes. And a, a large article of Boca wants to make him his vice. But that didn't happen because he felt he's as good as being the president mm. as well. So he went to Labour Party. So I think that is where the bottleneck is. And then let's not take for granted that. Uh, Alaji uh, Bola Tinugu, our president, mm. is a very skillful politician, is an experienced politician. I don't think the, the APC will just sit back there and watch this merger go smoothly because, uh, <laughs> you see, in politics, yes, they say politics is a dirty game, but it depends on how you play it. These guys are very experienced and I believe they might want to pull one or two stunts that will make this merger not really no happen word. because they know what will happen if this merger scale through. Okay, so um, let's 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 begin to round up now. So if you you said um, something about um, them coming together, the measure who leads and who doesn't lead. So we're already foreseeing that there's going to be a power tussle when we get to that point. But let's talk about the numbers now. Like you said, how Kwanko so swept 
you know, can know how Peter will be made it in, in, in the East and the rest. Is it just enough to have numbers to win? Because I asked you a question and, and you didn't touch on that about the ideologies too. What are these parties going to, because we know what they all stood for, their manifestos, what are they going to come together to bring to the table uh, alongside these numbers that they have? Let me not lie to you, there's no ideology anywhere in Nigerian politics. It's all about numbers. Politics in Nigeria is all about the numbers and personal interests. So first. why do we even need another party? Well, the, the thing is, you see, they'll tell you, we are not okay with this party, let's try the next one. It, it's more like a trying game, you keep trying. Mm. Trying when you're not okay with Mr. A, you look at Mr. B. And so let's forget about ideology for now. I don't think they'll come out, they'll tell you all manner of things, give you all manner of promises, but when it's time to deliver, it's another ball game. You see, he who wear the shoes know where it pinches. Mm. Some persons are not empowered yet, they'll promise you heaven and earth. But when they get there, just like Ruben Abati said in one of his uh, quotes, that it seems like there's something in that rock that makes leaders not mm. to keep to their words. So, yeah. I will not be surprised when some of these persons who are not in power now, when they get there, they probably might not do much. All right. So, but the, the hope is that one day in Nigeria, we see parties, political parties that are run based on ideologies and of not course, numbers. Of course, it's because happening not, in our life. It just, it just, um, I remember I've asked you this question, whether there is a hope. There is a hope. For the, so let's, let's, let's keep that hope. For. There is a Maybe hope. Maybe our next conversation, we'll talk about how we can begin to get people who want to, who can revolutionize See, the political the, scene. We Unfortunately, have, we're, we're out, out of, of time. time. Okay, we're out fine. of time right now. Yes. So um, we'll have to round up. It's always wonderful having your views and analysis Thank here on Viewer Exclusive. Thank you very much for joining me. I've been in conversation with Mr. Ejiro Onueta. Uh, lecturer at the city polytechnic abuja and also a political commentator and i've been your host chino so check us until i come your way again have a good day